Hello everyone, it's Eric from Strong Medicine with another video about the coronavirus epidemic. It's been just over one month since the World Health Organization confirmed that this outbreak is due to a never-before-seen virus within the coronavirus family. Yet, its official name is still Novel Coronavirus 2019, named after the year it first appeared. Though the media, laypersons, and healthcare professionals have all been referring to it as just plain coronavirus. Unfortunately, this creates some confusion because there are over 20 different coronaviruses. For example, one is responsible for the SARS epidemic of 2003, another is a cause of the common cold, and one even causes diarrhea in dogs. Yesterday, our hospital had to email our staff that the coronavirus that's reported on our routine respiratory viral panel is not the novel coronavirus 2019, but rather one of the much less dangerous viral species. Apparently, there had been confusion about it, which is, of course, understandable. This begs the question, why has this disease not yet been named? And the answer is that it's not simple to determine an appropriate name for a new disease. To understand some of the challenges, let's look at the names of a few newly discovered infectious diseases of the last 50 years. For example, Ebola. The Ebola virus was named after the Ebola River in the Democratic Republic of Congo which is near the first identified patient. However, by a large margin, the deadliest Ebola outbreak in history was located 2,000 miles away in West Africa. Now granted, most people in the West, they aren't familiar at all with the Ebola River, but for those in Africa, the name can be misleading. The same thing happened with the Zika virus. Although the Zika epidemic in 2015 and 16 was mostly located in South America, the virus itself is named for the Zika forest in Uganda, where it was discovered in 1947. In 1976, Legionnaires' disease was first described and later attributed to a newly discovered bacteria subsequently named Legionella pneumophila. It was called Legionnaires' disease because the outbreak occurred during a convention of the American Legion, whose members were known at the time as Legionnaires. It seems kind of unfair, though, for the victims of the outbreak to have their name permanently associated with the disease that killed them. In 1986, researchers named uh, HIV. The human immunodeficiency virus seems like a good name. It's descriptive, and it has a distinctive acronym. AIDS, the disease that's caused by HIV, stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, also descriptive and lending to a good acronym. But I think whoever named these were trying to make up for the horrible predecessor names for AIDS. GRID, or G-R-I-D, stood for gay-related immunodeficiency, and even worse, the 4-H disease, which stood for homosexuals, heroin users, hemophiliacs, and Haitians. It would be hard to come up with a more offensive name than that. But misnaming diseases is not just about a lack of political correctness, it's also a serious public health issue. It's very easy to imagine that these very early names for AIDS not only stigmatized individuals and whole communities, but they may have also led to a delay in everyone else realizing that they were at risk of infection too. And of course, there are diseases named after animals, such as avian flu and swine flu, which are not specific virus strains per se, but are rather names given to any form of the influenza virus, which are adopted, or sorry, adapted to predominantly infect birds and pigs respectively. While it's sort of descriptive, it also gives the false impression that for a human to become infected, they must necessarily come in contact with the relevant animal, which is not true as these viruses can be easily transmitted between people. And there can be dr drastic consequence due to this misunderstanding too. For example, during the 2009 flu pandemic, dubbed swine flu in the press because it was due to a strain of swine influenza, countries around the world re responded by mass exterminations of their pigs despite no evidence that their specific swine populations were transmitting the infection to humans, or even that the animals had the relevant virus in them at all. So now, let's come back to coronavirus. We can't call it Novel Coronavirus 2019 because that name is too much of a mouthful for people to adopt. But we also can't keep just calling it coronavirus because that's not specific enough. And although I've heard it referred to as both the Wuhan flu and Chinese flu, those are terrible names, since they'd stigmatize the Chinese people, they'll be confusing if containment efforts are unsuccessful and the virus becomes truly pandemic, and of course, the virus, it's not an influenza virus anyway. 
in 2015, the World Health Organization released very simple guidelines on how to name new, uh, new diseases. Don't name them after places. Don't name them after a cultural group. Don't name them after animals. And don't name them after a specific individual person, like, for example, Lou Gehrig's disease or Parkinson's disease. One excellent virus name is actually SARS, standing for the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Virus. As with HIV and AIDS, it's descriptive, it's accurate, and it leads to a distinctive acronym. Coincidentally, it would also be a great name for novel coronavirus 2019 if it wasn't already taken. So interestingly, so I'm going to ask, like, who gets the final say? Like, who gets to name this virus and this awful disease? There's a small group called the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses who've been tasked with this decision. They've been discussing it for the past few weeks, and they've reportedly settled on a name and are just waiting for an announcement to be published in a scientific journal, which could come any day. It's a fair bet that it, can, uh, that it will be a descriptive phrase that can be reduced to a pronounceable acronym similar to AIDS and SARS, but we'll see soon. Anyway, thanks for watching, and of course, stay safe.